Welcome back to Intro to HACCP. Today we'll be talking about preliminary tasks. The theme of today's lesson is getting ready to develop your HACCP plan. In the previous lessons, we discussed how prerequisite programs should be used to control food safety hazards that occur in the processing environment. Successful implementation of GMPs ensures clean and acceptable operating conditions in the environment. And these are listed as sanitation performance standards by the FSIS. Examples of such conditions include ventilation, water supply, and sewage disposal. We also discussed how SSOPs narrow this focus by requiring monitoring and re record keeping actions to ensure conformance to standards for conditions such as cleanliness of food contact surfaces. You were introduced to the differences in SSOP requirements between the FDA and FSIS, and you were assigned to draft SSOPs according to these different requirements. Now you should be fully capable of leading a processing facility in the successful development, monitoring, and record keeping of prerequisite programs. Your next step is to get ready to develop a HACCP plan. The goal of today's lesson is for you to be able to describe the purpose and importance of preliminary tasks in developing a HACCP plan, and to explain what preliminary tasks are required by each regulatory agency in, develop in developing HACCP plans. One of these preliminary tasks is to construct a flow diagram. And so another goal is for you to construct your own flow diagram for processing a food product. Since I'm a big football plan, I like to compare the process for developing a HACCP plan with the process of preparing to play an intramural flag football game. We can condense this process into several simple steps. The first step is to assemble a football team. Next, the team should review the rules of the game assign positions, and agree on how important it is to win and have fun. The last step is to practice. In practice, the team typically comes up with a few key plays that they think will work to get the ball past the defense. The National Advisory Committee on Microbiological Criteria for Food designated the following preliminary tasks for developing a HACCP plan. Number one, assemble a HACCP team. Number two, Describe the food and its distribution. Number three, describe the intended use and consumers of the food. Number four, construct a flow diagram which describes the process. And number five, verify the flow diagram. These preliminary tasks should be accomplished prior to considering the seven HACCP principles. The purpose of preliminary tasks is to build the foundation for which HACCP principles are applied towards. So let's start with step number one, assembling a HACCP team. A HACCP team should be comprised of a team of individuals who possess the best expertise, technical knowledge, and diversity available to construct a food safety plan. Just like the coach of a good football team possesses expertise and leadership skills, the leader of a HACCP team should have in-depth knowledge and experiences with food safety plans and good facilitation and decision-making skills. The rest of the team should be recruited to include persons with the following qualifications. The rest of the team should be recruited to include persons with the following qualifications. Number one, familiarity with the processing plant and the process for the product that the HACCP plan is being created for. Number two, expertise encompassing a broad scope of the processing operations, including engineering, production, sanitation, management, and research and development. Number three, a variety in knowledge, skills, and experiences. It is beneficial to include persons encompassing broad perspectives since this will enhance communications and a sense of ownership of the project of developing a HACCP plan. In particular, including management and production personnel is crucial for ensuring that the HACCP plan will be assimilated as best as possible, since these persons will ultimately be held accountable for successful follow-through with the HACCP plan. Obviously, it is ideal that as many persons as possible in the processing environment are trained in HACCP systems. In fact, the FSIS requires that individuals involved in the development, reassessment, and modification of the HACCP plan shall have successfully completed a course of instruction in the application of the seven HACCP principles to meat or, pol meat or poultry product processing, as described in Title IX, Part 417.7. The FDA essentially maintains the same requirement in Title 21, Part 120.3, for example, in juice products. 
You should be proud of yourself since completion of this course will give you this qualification. That will be a great line item to have in your resume. It is common for small food companies to hire consultants trained in HACCP principles to, to develop their HACCP plans. While this is entirely acceptable according to the regulations described in the training requirements for both FDA and FSIS, it is not ideal since the persons working at the processing facility do not possess as much knowledge of the plan or its principles as they would if they had been trained in HACCP. Nonetheless, this is a reasonable option for small operations with limited resources. Now let's turn to the second preliminary step of describing the food and its distribution. This step is fairly straightforward. How would you go about describing a food product? Think of this as if you were describing to a friend how to make your favorite cake, pizza, barbecue pork, or any other favorite food. First, you are going to list all the ingredients in the product, and then you are going to describe how the food is prepared. The list of ingredients will help you to identify which ingredients pose food safety hazards in terms of allergens, sensitivity to microbiological growth, and any other considerations that might be regulated, such as nitrate levels in meats. By describing the food in terms of how ingredients are handled and combined together in cooking processes, you will be able to identify conditions that allow for microbial growth or contamination. Also, you should describe the food in terms of its shelf life. Is it shelf stable or fully cooked? How long is the shelf life? And how would you know if it is at the end of its shelf life? This brings us to the next step, describing the intended use and the consumers of the food. Is the product intended for consumers to eat it without further cooking? Or is it expected that consumers would understand that they should cook or fully reheat the product? Or is the product sold as an ingredient to be used in another product, for example, pepperoni for pizza companies? There are nine processing categories recognized by the FSIS, and these are listed in Title IX, Section 417.2. It is also critical to define who the intended end user is. Is the food going to be eaten by consumers in general, or is the anticipated consumer an infant immunocompromised individual or the elderly. These considerations will all bear great weight as you draft your HACCP plan. After you have sufficiently described your product, you're ready to construct your flow diagram. This flow diagram will be referred to many times in subsequent steps in the HACCP plan development process, such as hazard analysis. A flow diagram is a diagram of the steps of each process that illustrates the product flow in the processing facility. Each step is depicted as a block, and the order of steps is illustrated by, the connect by connecting the blocks with arrows. Your flow diagram should be simple and not too complicated. Complicated processes should be broke down into individual steps. An example of a flow diagram for a country-style ham slicing process is provided in this slide. You will notice that there are several examples of flow diagrams provided by the FSIS on the internet. Beware that many of these flow diagrams are not necessarily adaptable, since they are generally not specific enough for actual food products. The FSIS groups the ingredients in many of these flow diagrams into two categories, meat ingredients and non-meat ingredients. These examples are intended to be used as starting points. Proper construction of flow diagrams will further break these categories into specific ingredients, so that they may be appropriately evaluated in terms of present food safety hazards. After you construct the first draft of your flow diagram, your next step is to get together with your team and evaluate it for, by looking for gaps that you left out. Keep in mind that the flow diagram will be used to make informed decisions in your next phase of the HACCP plan, which is hazard analysis. Therefore, make any pertinent changes as needed. For example, ask whether you accounted for rework. What about necessary ingredient thawing processes? Did you account for the use of water, air, or gases? It is also important to note pertinent conditions such as temperature, pH, and water activity of the product. To what extent is a flow diagram required? While the FDA does not necessarily state the requirements of a flow diagram in the Code of Federal Regulations, the FSIS does. In Title IX, Part 417.2, it states, a flow chart describing the steps of each process and product flow in the establishment shall be prepared and the intended use or consumers 
or of the finished product shall be identified. You should be aware that it is common practice to also include the product category for FSIS regulated products and make a habit of this for yourself. There are many resources for helping you develop your flow diagram available on the internet. In particular, the FSIS provided a guidebook for the preparation of HACCP plans. I encourage you to look at these materials as you develop your HACCP plan flow diagram.